Today on the Skid Factory, we're at Haltech in Sydney, and we're going to show you what goes into the production of a Haltech ECU. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We're here at Haltech in Sydney, and you'll probably recognise this man. This is Scott. Hi. Kind of the face of Haltech to a point. Been for I a suppose. while. Yeah. 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 You'll see him videos. working his magic, tuning, pulling engines apart, generally being a cool bloke. Oh, thanks mate. So Good he's man. the guy to show us around this facility here in Sydney. Uh, Haltech's come a long way, long way over the years and uh, there's some really impressive technology here and we're going to show you what's up. First nice. of all, can you tell us what can you tell us about Haltech? It says established 1986, so that's older than Woody. <laughs> so nearly older than me. Old. So established 86, um, so Haltech was the first engine management company to patent real-time programmable engine management, meaning that when you type something into the keyboard, it makes a real change to the engine management system, in turn changing the fueling or the ignition of the engine. So they held the patents for that for about 10 years, uh, which is all pretty impressive. So that was back in the day, that, that, yeah. that was pretty full on. Uh, we've got a bit of a history lesson in the back here where we've got one of the first circuit boards that was ever designed down through the F2 and the F3 and the E6Xs. So I came on board about here somewhere in about 2000, 2002. And then we've got a whole bunch of the later model engine management systems up to the Elite series, which are the ones that we do now and the ones that are getting designed and manufactured here. Um, we've got to update a bit of this, to be honest, yeah, because all the it's, Nexus... Yeah, it's a bit out of date now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've got to make some room. We might have to get rid of that book down there and we'll put the... <laughs> no, we won't. But we'll put that Nexus series stuff in there now. So all of this stuff, so from about the, the sort of sport to the Elite series, um, was all designed here in this building. Um, all of the systems were all designed and manufactured in Australia, whether it was Tarrant Point in south of Sydney or if it's in Wetherill Park here in the sort of southwest. Yep. So all of the sort of the, the planning, what we want through to the board design, the software design, the firmware design, manufacturing, and then the production and then packaging and then shipping is all done right here in Motherwell Park. Awesome. Let's go and have a look so, and check out how this happens. All right. Well, we're in reception, so we'll wander upstairs first. It's probably the right place to start to show where the ideas get put on the board, then go through into the research and design team to get something sort of on paper, exactly what we want, design things, and then they go and through and put it into production. So we'll is start this, upstairs. Is this where the nerds live? Are we allowed to call yeah. them nerds? Yeah. Because yeah. that's not yeah. an insult. No. It's not that's an insult. A, um, <laughs> well, this is where the magic happens, Al. This is it. So we're upstairs in Wetherill Park. So this is where the R&D department are. All of these guys are designing the engine management system, whether it's from the hardware design on this side of the room, whether it's the software, so the stuff that actually goes on the laptop and yep. the bit that you're clicking through, or whether it's the firmware side over here, so firmware being the stuff that's inside the ECU making all the decisions. Yep. So these guys do all of the design from the very beginning through to troubleshooting, through to re-spinning boards, so if component shortages, which has been a thing lately, yeah. become a problem, this side of the room will find new components. They'll do a re-spin, so they'll essentially redesign the circuit board to fit the new components. Yep. The firmware guys will then look at that and rework the firmware, so the stuff inside the ECU to work with the new components. And then the software guys will make any changes so that to the end user, it looks exactly the same yep. and a seamless thing for the end user, which is kind of what, what we're going for. Awesome. Um, all the engine management systems, widebands, dashes, all that stuff, so everything's designed manufactured, um, supported, um, down this side of the room, so bug fixes and that sort of stuff all get done through here as well. Cool. And this is this an R50? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty hard to fit in your car, eh? So, that, look, that actually looks like a um, 1986 Bosch ECU. With the connectors. <laughs> so this is one of the circuit boards that go into the testers. So a big part of doing an engine management system is testing everything before it goes. So all of this does a full test procedure so we know that when a unit gets shipped out that there's no failure, no component failures, no manufacturing failures and we're very confident before anything goes. So the, t the test circuitry is, is a big deal and a yep. big part of it. So once the guys have designed the thing, once it's been developed, once it's out in the hands of workshops like you, 
this is where all the sales and tech department is done. So when you ring for tech support, this is the area that you're speaking to. Normally there are more people in the room, but since COVID, it's kind of been discovered that we can work from home. So some of the guys decide to work from home one, two days a week, something like that, and then come into the office to sort of catch up and see what's going on for the rest of the part. So when you ring up, picture this room, this is, you're speaking to someone in this room normally. I reckon I've asked some stupid questions into this room before. There are no stupid <laughs> questions. Alan has just spied in the corner of one of the applications engineering rooms. I'm pretty excited about this. Man, this thing's a beast. So Soon to be released? It is. Um, so that'll be the first quarter of next year. Um, this thing, the R3, so you would have seen the R5, you've used one already that's got the five ECU connectors. This one's got three ECU connectors, um, two 34 pins, and still got the four 25 amp outputs as well. Um, it's got more inputs and more outputs than like the Elite sort of 2500 series, the flagship that's been around for sort of 10 or so years now. Yep. Uh, onboard wideband, it's got up to six 8 amp outputs as well. So a cut down version of the PDM stuff. This is fantastic for an engine conversion into a resto mod style car then drive the fuel pump, the injectors, yeah. ignition, thermofan directly, and your engine management system is kind of a separate Self, part. That... Self-sustained. Perfect, no fuses, as no long relays. As you can switch it on reliably, it's, That's it's it. all good. Yeah. And I so, also notice it's got internal map. Internal 45 pound map sensor. Recently, oh, nice. all of the Elite series have gone to 45 pound internal as well, because you know we recognize that 45 is the new 30, like, <laughs> which, which, which was the new 20. Yeah. <laughs> like, so more than reasonable. So yeah, this thing, you know, I don't want to put the sales pitch on you, but the, I'm really excited about this particular unit. Only that no fuses and relays, and the wiring got so much easier. Uh, yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm, mm. I'm a massive fan, as mm. the audience would probably know of this this PDM ECU concept. It's awesome. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm sure Lock Connect is probably the only thing on this as well. That's probably unique to our engine management systems, where because they've got the PDM, they use power and ground through the little Sherlock. This has got a cute little ones instead of the yeah, R5. Yeah. Um, mate, this thing is a this thing is a killer. I'm very excited about it. Stand by. We might get mm. a use of one of these very shortly. But hopefully. not that one. That one has to stay here. Not this one? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is where it starts at the very beginning. So once the guys have designed everything, it's gone through testing, we know everything's working. Come on in. Come on in security is keep secret, on pushing. Secret room. Keep on pushing, keep on getting up there, all the way to the end on the left hand side. This is where all the real magic happens and it is pretty incredible what's going on in here. So, if we start at the very beginning, here's an empty circuit board. So this is what they were designing upstairs. One side of this board's already been loaded, the other side hasn't been loaded yet. So what's going on is that it goes through these machines, starts with the solder paste machine. So what's happening there, think about it sort of like a screen printer, just like your t-shirt. It'll screen print on the solder paste onto the circuit board. We can probably pop this one open. No, we can't, she's locked, so it's probably preheating. As once it gets the, the solder screen printed through, exactly the same as your t-shirt, one of these things with a board layer on it, it cruises through here into what we the pick and place machines. So these three machines are all pick and place. So basically the more machines you've got, the more reels and the more components you can stack together. So the more products you can manufacture without having to change reels out and without having to restock wheels. So as so these we come reels. On, yep. Okay, so you have a look at this. So one reel, that's the feeder on the side, and then see that that's one component, that rectangular thing in there. And what's going on inside the machine? Oh, that one's got stuff on top. We'll cruise to one that's working. So what's going on here? That head goes along and it picks up the parts off each of the feeders. It's going super slow at the moment because the lid's open and you might be able to put your arm in there and get a crazy tattoo. But it will come across, picks places, picks places. Picked up two bits just then, dropped one, two bits. Do you see that? So it's loading the boards. Isn't that cool? 
Is and mesmerizing. Me. <laughs> so it's got a laser that's lined up the board perfectly so it knows exactly where it is. Isn't that incredible? So oh, cool. So the idea of having so many machines and so many components is that we can run an Elite board, then a 750, then a Nexus, then a wide beam. Whereas if you've got less machines, yeah, don't worry about him. He's, he's working hard, that one. Yeah, I reckon. So the more machines you've got, the less manual labour you need, essentially. So we've actually got this whole line, which is probably getting towards the end of its life now with the number of products that we manufacture. So we've actually just invested in a full new line to run through here. Um, that should be able to up the output by about 15 times. So it's pretty impressive. You ready to put him back to bed, Al, or you, yes. you want to keep watching? I want to see it go fast. All right, yeah. We have to go through the screen then because no one can be trusted. All right, door down. There we go. He's partying. Think of it like a CNC machine for an inlet manifold, except for electronics. So, anyway, once all that's done, there's still one more part to go, and that's soldering all these components on because that paste was, was, was wet, right? So, if we sneak over here, I'll very gently move these. So, if we look down in here, this is the vapor phase solder. So, what's happening there, it's essentially cooking the boards. So, there's a fluid down the bottom that's heating up. The, 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 the vapor of it comes up through the board and heats the boards equally in order to solder all of the, the components on. The idea being that instead of putting it through an oven or something so this is supposed to heat the boards more equally so they don't twist yep. and then cool when they cool down you get cracking problems so all the boards go through there to cook then onto the next part so then we've got finished boards that are a whole bunch of different stuff so there's some dashes there's some pdm some wide bands uh, a whole bunch of ooh, a whole bunch of fancy ones they want those ones look pretty cool so 1500, 2500s, um, a bunch of the new R3s will be coming off this machine in the near future so that we can start producing them in the beginning of next year. And then, after this is all happening... there's obviously a, uh, a very important thing missing. Yeah, yeah. And that's... So what that's called is through hole. So there's surface mount. All the stuff we're talking about here is all surface mount components. A through hole component or a hole that goes the whole way through the circuit board is then hand soldered. Uh, we do have a thing called a selective soldering machine that's about to be set up to do a bit of that work. But we'll go into the next room now to look at quality control and look at the rest of the production. So once Raj has worked his magic and we're at this stage, there's still a little bit to go. You can't use it yet. Yeah, let's keep on going. Thank you, Raj. Thanks. Thanks, mate. So once the machines have done their job in there, it comes through here for all the quality control, all the testing. So we spoke about the testers upstairs. These things are where units get plugged in. So this one here, for example, is an Elite 1500 or 2500. It gets plugged in, it gets heat cycled and tested. All the results get documented. If it fails because of a component failure that's out of our control, it'll go into the next room where the guys will replace whatever components need replacing. It's pretty rare in these days to yeah. get a component that fails like straight out of a brand new part. Uh, it does happen though. Uh, from here, once it's tested, everything's documented. So against a serial number, we know that it's tested. We know all of the inputs on it. We know everything about that unit that we can always go back and look up. Then from here, comes over to casing. Hey bro. How's it going? Where all of the units get all put together and assembled. It's got all of the water seals in it. It's got the seals for the, map, the internal map sensor and all that stuff. Once that all gets joined together, they get cased up. They get retested once they're being cased up again. And then they head out to the front to go into the retail packaging. So yep. into the boxes, all the serialized, put into stock and then get dispatched from out the front. Cool. So it's like legit start to finish, everything's done. Every, here. every single part, yeah, there's yeah. nothing that we don't do here. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, hand soldering, the other side of the room here we missed was all of the hand soldering. We talked about the through hole stuff, so the header connectors and yep. any of the wires that go through the circuit board all get hand soldered on that side of the room. And then we'll go over the other side here. We've also got a selective soldering machine, which is another robot that goes through and solders all those as well. All right, so another production room in here. This one's specialized a little bit different. So this is where we do the IC7 dashes and where we assemble the R5s and soon to be the R3s as well. So in here, 
Um, yeah, look, Lingo does a great job of putting all of the dashes together and configures everything so that when they leave here, they're in production boxes, ready to go down to dispatch to ship straight out. All right, and then now we're in dispatch. So once everything's finished quality control, it's been retail packaged, here we are, this is it. If you order something, you might be able to get this Elite 1500, it gets packaged right here, shipped out with the courier to you all over the world, and that's it. So that beginning to end, that's where we are. Awesome. Once I've finished filling my pockets with uh, one of everything, we'll head off. <laughs> You're gonna well, need you know, some big pockets. <laughs> it's normally a lot fuller than this here. You're here just after Black Friday, so normally this would be full to the brim, but yet at the moment, this is kind of, we're pretty low at the moment. Popular items, for good reason. Thanks for having us, Mate. Scott. We really appreciate it. Pleasure. Uh, it is awesome to check out places like this with making stuff in Australia to a really high quality. And this is like world standard stuff. So as you know, we're we're a big lover of Haltech and Haltech's a big supporter of us. So get on it if you need any engine management stuff. Uh, also, the actual reason why we're here is we, we did a uh, Haltech mass debate you know how to spell that correctly, so don't don't ask. That's Richard's sense of humour coming through there. We've we've done a uh, just a little video with um, Scott and uh, Woody and I, and uh, you can check that out on their channel. Is it up here, Woody? Yeah, right there. Maybe I won't put the link in. How about that? Yeah. No, I will. I will. If you're watching on a TV or a phone, that won't come up. So we've wasted <laughs> our time. But check out Haltech's channel. There's heaps of great content on there also. So um, check that out. Pleasure. Sweet. Thanks for having us, Scott. Cheers, man. No worries. Lunchtime. See you next time. Raj, can I open the lid of this one while it's working, while it's operating? That's what we're talking about, man. That looks way too crazy. Yeah? It's exciting, Freddy. What if the robots take over? <laughs> Top left online? Hit it? <laughs> Sorry, bro. Production hold. I touched some <laughs> buttons. Oh, I press this one. Yep. <gasps> all right, so we've had a little bit of a scare, but we're all right again. <laughs> Here we go. It's okay. Hi, Dave. <laughs>